good morning, old squad. How y'all doing today? It's Friday. Just coming to you with a quick video. I thought about doing it yesterday, but I changed my mind, so I said, hey, we're going to go make a run, so let's get into it. Today's video is the number one way for new drivers to get directions to a shipper or receiver. Now, I know a lot of drivers buy the GPSs, whether it's a Garmin, whether it's a TomTom, -Tom, whether it's Brandon McNally, all the different de GPS devices on the market now to help you get to where you're going and to try to ensure you have a timely delivery or a timely pickup on both ends of your load. So, one of the problems with the GPSs are, is that although they are getting better, is that they will put you on roads that are not truck accessible. Meaning, although there may be no power lines, no bridges, uh, trees on the road, you may not be directly in a residential area, which most of the time you are in a residential area or something that leads into a residential or, or a uh, business district that is not suitable for trucks, meaning like a bunch of shops, coffee shops, stores, department stores, things of that nature. Those GPSs will put you on those roads. That is one, that is the major reason why a lot of older drivers do not trust GPSs. A lot of older drivers uses a map. Going back decades and decades and decades and decades, a map will get you where you need to go. A regular Randy McNally map will get you there. If you know how to use a map, which is key, then you will not have any problems getting to a shipper, getting from it, getting to and getting to and from a shipper or receiver. Here's how you do that. You use the Randy McNally map to route you from one state to the next state, from one city to the next city. Upon getting closer to the city in which that you are picking up in or that you are delivering in, what you do is that you call the customer. You call the company that you are going to to either pick up or deliver to. Why would you call those people? Why not? They work there. Whoever answers the phone, that person works there. If that person can't give you directions, someone in that facility can give you directions. So just on the law of averages, if there are 10 people in the building, there's a minimum of at least three that can tell you how to get to where they are and what to look out for, all those good, good old things in which to get you safely there and promptly there so that that can ensure your on-time delivery and on-time pickup. Now, some drivers use, uh, they just say a garment. A lot of drivers think garments are very good really because it's military spec. The military used the Garmin um, GPSs or the, the Garmin system a lot. So a lot of people think Garmin is the best. I personally don't have a preference. The reason why I don't have a preference is because I never have owned or used a GPS. Wait a minute, time out. Rewind. Hey, I need you guys to like, subscribe, comment, on this video share your thoughts with me share this video with other people that you may find that you think may find what I am saying interesting or if they totally disagree I am totally open to discussions notice I said open to discussions I don't mind discussing anything as long as the discussion is productive that's me now if it goes off rails I will go off rails. I'm, I'm just gonna tell you. <laughs> but I am open to a discussion which that if you have a different experience, if you're an older driver, have a different experience, or if you're a younger driver, and thus far you are having a different experience than what I am calling out, just be on guard. Just be aware that there is a chance that your GPS system may put you on a road that you should not be on. And for example, if you happen to be around Memphis, and you happen to get on, um, oh man, I can't remember the name of the highway. Ah, it slips my head. But what it is, 
Uh, it's a back row off of uh, Highway, uh, what's that, Highway 72. So right there where um, the Flying J is, if you come across uh, 72 into Memphis, right there the Flying J is, if you get off 72 and get on, get, get, get off right there and you make that left and go down that street about a mile, no, it's probably about half a mile, and bang on right, that right will run you all the way through the backside of uh, Olive Branch, in which that you can make, uh, it's different uh, industries on that strip. But most of those industries are on the east side of that, on the west side of that strip. If you get on that strip right there, at that point you are currently on the east side of that strip. Now, there is no sign that says no trucks until you get to the light to make the right turn. When you get to the light to make the right turn, you're going to travel probably about 200 feet, if that far. And you're going to see the sign say, no trucks. That ticket on that road is $1,017. The reason why I know is because I happened to one day to be on the west side of that strip. Upon being on the west side of that strip, I said, hey, this strip will run me way back to 72. Why am I going all the way back around? That don't make any sense. So, I got on that strip. I'm riding. Everything's fine. I mean, I am riding. Just cruising on down through traffic. I go probably about four miles down this strip, and there it goes. There's just one intersection, and upon getting to this one intersection, there's a little, I want to say it's a raceway gas station. I can be wrong, but I want to say there's a raceway gas station. If you are traveling east, there's a, a raceway gas station on the right-hand side of the road at this intersection. And right before you go, right as you go through the intersection, there's a sign that says, no trucks. Here's the kick. There's nowhere to turn around right there. Nowhere to turn around. There's no uh, intermediate switch that you can turn, make a left to get on the opposite side to travel back west. There's no big turnaround spots, open spots that you can turn around and then cross back over. None of that. So you, once you're on it, you got to ride it on out. So upon riding on out, I passed that gas station. And upon going maybe about a thousand feet to my right was a city cop. Now one would say, maybe he might let you slide. Nah, he came and got me, buddy. He sure did. He came and got me. He agreed with me. <laughs> Get this. He agreed with me that there is no sign saying no trucks until you get right there by that that gas station. Now this has been over three years ago now. So of course over time they could have changed that by now. Now they may have signs plastered all down through there. But for the drivers that know what highway I'm talking about, come in and come in, in the um in the comment section. Anyway, upon going through that, going through that intersection, passing by him, oh, it'll take him no time to come get me. I mean I, I mean it's a no-brainer. There's a truck driver, there's a super truck driver. Let me write him this ticket, let me up my ticket count. It was a no-brainer. He came right on out, pulled me over. I pulled over in the medium of the road. This lets you know, there's no room on this road. I pulled over in the turn lane of this road. He walks on up. He didn't even ask me for my license at first. He didn't ask me for nothing. He said, driver, why are you on this road? I said, well, this road runs back east to, 70, to 70, uh, 72, so I'm running it back east. I said, no, granted, I did not know that this road was not truck accessible because all the area I just came through, I'm seeing trucks. I'm seeing businesses that trucks are turning into, all of that. He said, are you right? He said, but once you get right there to that last intersection, you can't come down through here. I said, well, what was I supposed to turn around at? He said, well, you just have to know. Which is a stupid answer because if you don't know because you don't live there you don't travel there a lot then how are you supposed to be? you're not gonna know until you see the sign so it was a it was a stupid answer to me i mean it, all of it was stupid because to me it would have been simple as driver let's get you turned around you got to go back up that way i'm gonna give you a pass today you gotta go back up there Maybe, 
maybe he had done two or three other drivers like that. And finally, I came along and he was just like, no, nah, I'm going to get this one. I don't know. But what I do know is this. Using your regular phone GPS or using a regular car GPS will get you in an abundance of trouble. Maybe not all the time. Maybe one out of ten times that GPS leads you the wrong way. When it does, you have to ask yourself, is it really going to be working? Remember, I paid a $1,017 ticket because I was on the wrong road. And I'm going to give you the, this is the kicker of it all. Of it all. I had traveled so far in the road that I probably had maybe a solid two miles left to go. And I would have been off the road. And then upon the cop letting me go, he instructed me to continue to go that direction. He says, oh, you don't already got a ticket now. So 300 feet, slide right under the I-10 East ramp to Pensacola. If there's a, now, what, now, I'm going to tell you what that is. That's the GPS of my phone. Get me down here to, uh. Um, slide right onto the I-10 East ramp. Alberta, Alabama. And the reason why it gave me to Alberta, Alabama is because I know where Alberta is at. I was really trying Continue to Continue on I-10 East for five miles. How the traffic was flowing down in that area, which brings me to my second point. You can always use your phone GPS when traveling on major highways because what it do, it'll give you the traffic updates. That is key. That is something that a paper map would not tell you. That is very key. To know whether or not traffic has bagged up, to know whether or not there has been a, a wreck, to know whether or not there's road construction, those things are very key. Now that is one way that I will give phone GPSs, quote unquote Google, a big thumbs up. A big thumbs up. Google get a big thumbs up. Because Google in that aspect has saved me a many a times. And especially when I'm in a city like Atlanta or coming towards a city like Atlanta. It, saved, it has saved me several times. So, but to get in a city and to travel around in the city to make your delivery, especially a major city, and when I say major city, I'm talking about cities such as San Antonio, Dallas, uh, Philadelphia, that is major. Philadelphia roads are major. You'll be on a straight city road, next thing you know, you feel like you're on the back, on the countryside. So, knowing which one of those roads can be on is very major. So I just want to drop in with you guys and let you guys know that, hey, there's nothing wrong with learning how to read a map. And before GPSs were invented, guess what? That is how drivers got from point A to point B. The second way drivers got from point A to point B is that a long, 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 long time ago, in truck stops, there used to be uh, phone booths, meaning there will be the independent booths that you could go in Pay phones was in there. Sometimes there were regular phone, a regular phone, especially you can use, especially if you had a 1-800 number, and you would, you can use the phone, call whoever you need to call to get whatever directions you need to get. Or if you need to call your dispatcher, that's the way for you to call your dispatcher. I'm harking you back to a time before GPS and cell phones, which the trucking industry is older than GPS and cell phones. So. There is a way to travel across this country without using GPSs. And for the most part, cell phones. But the reason why I said most part cell phones is because you still gotta use that phone to call the customer. Once you get in, they just say you're going to St. Louis. You going to say they say you're going to 133rd Street, uh, East Hawkins in St. Louis. Okay, what if East Hawkins have to be a no pass a no uh, pass through road for trucks. There got to be a second way to get into that facility. The person that you, the people that you're delivering to, they can tell you how to get there. So be smart, guys. Plan your trip. Read your read read your bill manifest. Make sure you have the correct addresses. Make sure you have the correct phone numbers. In, another In way, two miles, take exit 49 toward Baldwin Beach Express. If you happen to get a bad phone number on your bill of lading, Google the company. Sometimes it'll send you to the main company. But if upon that, it's 
part of the company that you're going to be in a, being in connecting with the main company, someone there will tell you or will transfer you to the correct person you need to speak to. Also, keynote, if you ever get transferred, always ask for the phone number that you being transferred to in case you get disconnected. That's very important. Because what if you don't, what you have to do is wind up calling those people back in order to get the right, in order to get through to the right people. So, I'm going to sign out now. You guys be safe. Love each other. Love one another. Respect those. Respect you. Respect, love those that, respect, that love you in return. That is key. I always try to put your best foot forward because not putting your best foot forward means that you are one step behind the game. One step behind the game can cost you an opportunity. So, be safe, guys. Love each other. Respect each other. Show that love and that respect in return. And like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And we're out of here. Okay.